Also a lesser known fact, when I got to the Chicago airport, like, you know, to come home, I literally cried in the bathroom for like 15 minutes because I was like, oh my God, ah, like I was just like, I felt like for 10 days I was in a vortex and now I have to come back out to like a reality I don't want to be in. And I'm just like, I want to do this forever. Like, can this please be my job? Definition of a bandit. You can stand it. Do you see me? Oh my god, my glasses are so disgusting! Oh my god, literally, fuck my ass. Okay, it's 8.34 and the Kardashians comes on at 9, so I need to watch. What is up, Crackhead Nation? It is your girl, Princess Galaxy, and I am finally back um, in my apartment <laughs> in Michigan. I know I am not in any other city. I'm not in New York. I'm not in Dallas. I'm not in Atlanta. I am in Michigan. <laughs> The most magical place on earth, right? <laughs> oh my god. If you guys have not been watching the channel, I basically went on a 10 day, five city journey following my favorite, currently my favorite K-pop group, Super M on tour. So the main reason that I was able to like come up with this idea is because it just kind of came to me intuitively. And I was very much, I'm very much a type of person that's like, okay, like if I really want to do something, I can do it. I just don't know how, so I'm gonna manifest it. <laughs> so if you guys don't know, um, <laughs> what am I talking about? <laughs> I don't know why I'm just so like, I feel like as soon as I got to the Chicago airport, because I live by Chicago, like I live not by Chicago, but like an hour and a half from Chicago. So I drove there to go on the, get on the plane. And I went to Dallas slash Fort Worth. Then I came back to Chicago for the Chicago concert. Then from Chicago, I went to ATL, which is Atlanta, Georgia. After that, I flew a plane from Atlanta to DC and I took a bus from DC to New York. And I got a plane, which I was actually late for. Um, from New York to Chicago. So that was the end of my journey and it ended I believe I came back home on Wednesday the 20th. It was a really crazy time And so I know you guys have been asking me so many questions in the comments and I wanted to finally Sit up sit up here and talk about kind of how this went down how I was able to do it and most importantly what you guys have been asking asking so much was how did you pay for all this? Like, cause you guys saw me like in every vlog, you noticed that I had tickets for everyone. I had pretty good seats. And um, I, <laughs> real quick, I'm just gonna answer this very quickly. So I wrote down my plans for like what I want to do. Like I want to have a, two I want to have a ticket for every single date and I want to attract, you know, like fun quality people. And I'm not sure how I'm gonna do this. I don't, I don't really have any money, but um, I'm just gonna try it. And literally a few days before that, before I sent the intention, I'm like following Super M around like the country basically. <laughs> the tour's not over by the way, but like the first leg of the tour. Actually like I cried in New York. I was like, it's over, <laughs> it's over. <laughs> I gotta go back home, no. But I remember before the tour started, the reason why I had all the airplane tickets, except for the one from New York to, to um, Chicago, back to Midway Airport, was because I was actually planning on going on a cruise with one of my friend's family. And um, I met up with them like a month before Super M announced that they were going on tour. And I was like, uh, I don't think I really want to go with them. No hate. I just didn't really feel like, uh, like I, I just wasn't really feeling it at that moment. And I was like, I'll have plenty of opportunities to go to like, you know, um, foreign countries and, you know, go on a cruise. And I really appreciate their generosity. They did not have to ask me. And, um, you know, so I canceled it and I didn't really expect to get anything from it. But I remember my mom's, I'm um, not my mom, my friend's mom was like, hey, so we can't, re we can't get a refund for these Southwest flights. So you can use them for whatever you want. And we can just like, you know, you can, you can just pay us back. And so I'm like, okay, cool. And so it was like a flight from, it was a round trip flight from, Chicago to Fort Lauderdale and it was literally five hundred and like sixty dollars and I'm just like okay that's a lot for one flight like even a round trip so to me that was like hey is that usually that expensive and guess what guys when I made this intention it was like a few days maybe later 
um after this whole airplane thing i made the intention that like okay like i want to see super m on tour i'm not sure how the fuck i'm gonna do this and then i put the intention i wrote down i'm so and like i wrote down like kind of like the result because when you're trying to like manifest stuff um you want to like do it with like my toe is like chipping off ew look at my toe wait hold on ew that's disgusting look ew what the fuck <laughs> i just found these slides i came home and i found the other slide downstairs i haven't found i haven't saw these in a year i'm gonna wear them every video now i wore these outside it's like 40 degrees <laughs> i'm so new york now but <laughs> i just got so sidetracked so what happened was i ended up using the the points or miles or the amount of money for like basically every flight except for the one from new york to chicago so that like went perfectly and once i set that intention i wrote down i don't remember what i wrote down um i think i actually might uh, oh my god i'm just burping i'm so sorry it's in my luggage let me go get it he slaps like just my fucking slaps but i feel like he, he might be ugly in real life i don't know <laughs> i don't want to know what he looks like aha here it is okay this is what i wrote down for my super m tour challenge so um i kind of made it like a, oh that's my venmo password hold on let me like rip this <laughs> holy fuck okay i wrote this down um a few days like when did i even i don't even think i had a date but october 4th was the day that the tour was announced and i think i decided to do this like on october 10th so this is literally like a month before like the concert actually started <laughs> my life is so last minute like dead ass so this is what I wrote down and we're going to see, I haven't been through this, so we're going to go through it and see if all of this came through, came true. Okay, so I wrote down, my Super M Tour Challenge will attract the right people to my channel and my Instagram. That happened, okay? Um, Not just like with growth, but I got a lot of like new subscribers. I think I'm almost at 500, Crackhead Nation is almost at 500 subscribers. Bitch, it's gonna be what? It's gonna be even more popping when we reach 500,000 subscribers. That's gonna be dope. But thank you so much for all the people. So, yes, it attracted the right people to my channel and my Instagram because I met so many amazing people along the way who were like not just like K pop fans, but also like just people who cared about my journey. I literally met a lady who was like, gave me $20 because she was like, I think it's cool what you're doing, so I'm just gonna give you money. And I'm like, thank you <laughs> that's really nice <laughs> i went myself a meal in dallas <laughs> so yeah um that happened so we can check that off i wasn't really specific about it i wasn't like oh by the end of the month i want like 500 subscribers i was just kind of like vague with it so the next time like i set an intention i know now to be a little more specific but not be too like have the intention but also let it go and that was like what really made me successful so the next thing i wrote down was i will get an abundance of money and i will attract luxury and safe flights less than a hundred dollars so i did attract flights i did attract safe flights for less than a hundred dollars but i wouldn't call it luxury <laughs> i mean i actually did get like free food um i got pretzels on the flights and i got i felt very luxurious because not only was i flying but I was also treated very well by everyone around me. Like, no matter who I was sitting next to, like, on every single flight, I had, like, the best people around me. Like, very blessed. Okay. New and exciting opportunities will come to me. Um, I don't, that's really vague. <laughs> um, I'm definitely learning to be more specific, but new and exciting opportunities will come to me. Like, kind of, like, through doing this um not that i know of yet um that doesn't mean they're not going to manifest they just have not happened in the time of like the tour um so actually if you guys can see um i wrote down like the the tour like the first part and i like i kind of had fun with it i wrote like the united states I can't even see it. okay hold on oh fuck i'm looking at the mirror <laughs> so i basically wrote down like a little map and the dates where I was going so it was like really fun I made like I made it like a fun thing it wasn't like oh my gosh now I have to get this ticket and I have to get this flight and, uh, like you know what I mean like I wasn't really freaking out about it which I believe helped me um have it even faster the next thing I wrote down is I am aware safe and wealthy while having fun um so I was very aware of my surroundings and a lot of the times it didn't have to be because people were like for me for the tour I put out another intention that I wanted my intuition to guide me in the right places. 
and I feel as though being safe and aware was my intuition constantly putting me in places and situations where I would not be harmed. So this doesn't like, like I'm saying, all these things aren't like really specific, but it, they're just things I, I put out there like, okay, I want this. I said, I will attract luxury and safe flights for less than a hundred dollars. I did attract flights less than a hundred dollars. One of my flights was $97, like one way. And um, like, that's really fucking good for flights. And also I said, I will attract luxury and safe flights. Um, Southwest Airlines isn't really known for their luxury, but I felt very luxurious because um, the first time I was on a plane, I was going to Jamaica. It was coincidentally a Southwest Airlines flight and I just felt like anxious and oh, and like even though I didn't have like a bunch, I didn't have like first class, like I still felt very luxurious because I got like free stuff on the plane and the flight attendants were like really nice. They made me feel like a queen. So <laughs> I technically I did have luxury. So that might be a stretch, but I'm satisfied. <laughs> it is okay to be uncomfortable. Keep going. Holy shit, guys. You have no idea how much I literally have to chant that to myself. Um, for the most part, though, the like everything went very smooth except for the hiccup in DC about getting scammed. But that still ended up working out to my favor because the angel of a woman who bought my ticket, I wish I knew her name, but she is getting my blessings like every time like I pray because I'm just like, like I don't like pray, you know, like traditional prayer, but I like every now and then I think about that situation. I'm just like, I send her so much good energy and love right now because it's like, fuck, you know what I mean? Like that, you know? So that, that did work out um because I actually had a car payment and I remember like I didn't have the money to pay it and it still got paid and I was like how does that happen like I really just don't know um <laughs> Like my life is just like, oh my God, like when you, so basically this is just a, a huge example of trusting not just yourself, but also in the universe or God or whatever you believe in. And that if you want something, it can like happen for you. So I'm going to be answering a few questions that I got on Instagram asked today, like an hour ago and, and someone, I don't know who it is, but I have to give them a shout out because they basically like sent me all the questions that people kept asking me so yeah that's dope okay let me just try to go to instagram on wait do they have an app for the ipad i feel like a white mom trying to do this imagine instagram on an ipad i'm sorry but i'm only doing this for like white mom convenience but this shit looks probably so stupid you mean i can do weird shit on instagram on my ipad <laughs> that is like a whole other door for me <laughs> That's awesome. Also a lesser known fact, when I got to the Chicago airport, like, you know, to come home, I literally cried in the bathroom for like 15 minutes because I was like, oh my God, <sighs> like I was just like, I felt like for 10 days I was in a vortex and now I have to come back out to like a reality I don't want to be in. And I'm just like, I want to do this forever. Like, can this please be my job? So you know what? I told myself, I was like, I'm never going to underestimate anything I ever want again. And I've always wanted to do this and I'm going to keep doing this. So I'm not sure how that's going to happen, but I'm setting the intention again and my success will come. I'm already successful. Look at all the amazing people on the channel. Look at you guys. Look at Crackhead Nation. Like we are so iconic. Like, do you really think anyone can stop us? No, no. Oh my God. Look at the Instagram app on here. Bye. <laughs> They didn't even try to format it, honestly, mood. All right, let's just start with the questions. So started from the Shuga asked, ask, asked, ask, what? Um, <laughs> we even know. They asked, favorite venue, whether it was because of the fans or the actual venue and why. Okay, so my favorite vlog, which, okay, when I think of like favorite venue or favorite concert, I think of my vlogs. This is not me trying to like promote my vlogs. But honestly, you should check them out because they're all really interesting. And I went through a lot. So you see the whole journey. But my favorite um, concert date was either Atlanta or Chicago. With Atlanta, like, I've been to all the concerts. So I don't want to hear anyone's mouth, okay? 
But in Atlanta, I felt like there was so much energy that like the boys were also feeling the energy too. Like I forgot who said what, but I think so. I think Ten was like, "Holy fuck, guys! Like you guys are amazing." I mean, not literally because like they don't really curse, but you know, <laughs> like they all really enjoyed it. And the fans, they were like iconic. Like also, they were the loudest when it comes when it came to like doing fan chants and like jopping and stuff. Um, it was crazy. Like Atlanta was so fun. Also, Atlanta was the city where like on the like um. After the concert, all the NT all the NTC Zens went out and um did that English version of regular, like a huge like they were just singing it like so fucking loud. I'm just like I love Atlanta. I love Atlanta. I would like to go back actually dead ass. <laughs> dead ass. <laughs> Started from the Shuga also asked. Favorite solo stage and why? <laughs> Listen, guys. If you've seen any of the videos. You would know my favorite solo stage. It's actually really hard to figure out. Okay, so, <laughs> okay, so first, when they first started the tour, because I went to Fort Worth and that was like the first one, so I had no idea what to expect basically. And um, Lucas came out with this new song solo stage and that fucking shook me to my core. But then when I went to, um, when I went to Chicago and Atlanta, Tay um Tay Young's GTA solo really caught my eye and then I think like during the Atlanta like he changed his hair in Atlanta like instead of like it having up it was like down and I was like oh my god like it made me see him so differently so now like I'm kind of tied between Lucas's solo because I'm such a Lucas stan like daddy Lucas oh I should just make a video where I'm just like thirsting over him what do you guys think <laughs> would you guys like that because that's that's my energy currently and so I want to make stuff that is related to like actually my life and that is my life that man listen that man is my life we're the same age come through that's all I have to say come through so it's definitely between GTA and whatever Lucas's solo song is called I feel like they're also going to come out with a super M kind of like CD type of thing because they still have um they still have not like um released dangerous woman or with you um and i don't know what they're gonna do with those solo stages so also my next favorite was definitely confession 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 that's all i have to say like Jongin's dick magic like how can how can anyone compare how can anyone compare to Jongin's like dick magic you you think I would be tired of that shit right now you think I would have been like oh okay Jongin okay Kai not a big deal okay I've seen it like five times and I've seen it how many times while editing those videos no no I'm not tired of Lucas I'm not tired of GTA with Taehyung I'm not tired of any of them also, New Heroes fucking slaps. I didn't even know about New Heroes or like I didn't really listen to 10 or any of the NCT stuff before the concert. So literally going on like airports like from Chicago to Atlanta, I literally like played New Heroes during the T TSA like pre-check. Like, I was just like, look TSA, you either gonna uh, take me or my opa or both of us. Okay, because I <laughs> actually, um, he's Thai. So I'm... I <laughs> whatever he's k-pop whatever and so like that shit was so iconic so um yeah those are definitely my favorites lucas tay and ten new heroes fucking slaps also it's a good message also tens of pisces um we stand a sensitive loving iconic generous king um also i think taehyung is like my new bias in super m like him and lucas i'm sorry lucas i'm sorry i didn't mean to disappoint you but i'm just being honest okay that was a lot for me to emotionally process so the next comment not comment um the next question is favorite song performance overall whether it's the group ones or solo stage i really like dangerous woman because um it sounded it sounds so good when i heard it for the first time i was like i thought they were doing a cover of dangerous woman by ariana grande because they were doing like the acapella and then when bacon was like something about something about something, i was like are they doing a cover no, they literally ripped that part from the song. <laughs> I was like, what? Like, are they going to actually release that part? Because I'm pretty sure Ariana's team could sue them. Like, Republic Records says hi. Like, or maybe Capitol Records is owned by the same company that owns Republic. But either way, I was like, okay. <laughs> okay, girl. Um, So, Dangerous One was definitely my favorite. Hmm, favorite song performance overall. 
like I said, the solos were like iconic. Um, holy fuck, when they performed Jopping, even though it got copyright claimed in almost all the videos that I came out with, which is fine, I'll be making more videos, so I'm not too worried. But, um, Jopping, oh my god, they came so fucking hard. Like, oh my god, like, they were, like, so good. Like, uh, sorry. <laughs> I'm just like, it still shocks me as to how precise and how hard they were going during dropping like i know they practiced that so many times but it's like god damn you know what i mean so i'm like wow that really shook me to my core so yeah that was some iconic shit um dropping and oh my god no manners oh how did i forget about no manners bitch how did i forget um Young. we have a few words and by few words i mean fuck me that's <laughs> those are the words okay so um definitely no manners oh my god like just Taeyoung's part I'm sorry to everyone else I'm sorry Kai Tae, not Taeyoung yeah I'm sorry Kai Taemin and I'm so sorry I don't remember who else was in that okay I'm sorry everyone else who did no manners except for Taeyoung because um when Taeyoung started humping the floor I was like that could be me and he's 24 you're literally my opa, like, hey, um. also, can we talk about how, like, that hairstyle, like, he changed that halfway through the tour, and, like, in Atlanta, I was, like, actually making fun of him, I was, like, why does he look like that, like, it looks bad, and then literally in DC, I was, like, have my children, <laughs> like, it was so good, so No Manners is a bop, um, that was definitely one of my faves, and Dangerous Woman, and the solos, basically all of it. <laughs> And the last question is, how did you not lose your voice to what the fuck? Okay, so I got this a lot. Um, the main reason why I didn't lose my voice is this. I remember this from when I saw Blackpink VIP. So in April, when Blackpink came to Chicago, I saw them. And I remember watching my videos. And at the end of the concert, I noticed that I was, you know, obviously I was like, <gasps> because I was like barricade, like for Blackpink. So like they were right there. And I was like right here, like, oh my God, Jisoo almost took my phone. Like, bitch, like I should make a video on that. But I feel like it's been so long. Like, will people even care? I don't know. But if you want that, comment down below. Also, like this video. It helps me. It helps push the algorithm. Come something down. <laughs> but... The main reason why I didn't lose my voice, I think, for all these dates. Also, I didn't get sick either. Um, So, hey, yay, no common cold. <laughs> God's looking out for me. So, um, like I said, the main reason why I really did not lose my voice was because I've been to so many concerts. And at Blackpink, I noticed that by the end of it, even though I felt, I hurt, I felt my throat strained, it didn't hurt like it usually did. Because at that point, I think Blackpink was like maybe my 18th or 19th concert, maybe 20th. I, I gotta write them all down so I can like, you know, remember. Um, I might make a video on that. But long story short, um, yeah, so Blackpink um, kind of just permanently made my voice like this. And um, it, it takes practice. It's just practice. You know, when you... When you, when you, <laughs> when you do so much with your voice, anything is possible. And also, I kind of grew up just screaming. Um, I was very loud as a kid, so that really helps. I've never really felt a lot of restraint with my throat chakra, but I, I've never had an issue kind of like talking or speaking my mind, so that really helps. Um, yeah, I had like I've gotten a lot of comments about this, but I mean, one thing also is like coffee, I guess, helps your throat. I don't really know. Um, I drink coffee every day, so maybe that's why. But I think a lot of it had to do with the fact that like the reason why I didn't get sick and the reason why my throat didn't suffer as much was because I felt very kind of like in my comfort zone and I felt very secure in what I was doing. And I was just having fun. Like I wasn't thinking about, oh, what am I going to eat tomorrow? that sounds bad <laughs> that like that sounds like I didn't care about myself no like I didn't mean it in a way like that I just meant like I did I wasn't constantly looking in the future like I was just having fun in the present moment and I was just like okay now the concert's over let me get this lift and go home 
oh, okay, now, now I'm back at, well, not home, but like back at the, wherever I was at. I'm like, oh, okay, back to the hotel, cool. Oh, okay, now I'm doing, you know what I mean? But like, I'm enjoying kind of like 80% of the process. Um, the next, the 20%, because of the reason why it's not 100 was because I think it's just very natural for people to just worry about their next step instead of like actually enjoying like, hey, being like having gratitude, be like, hey, I'm on this journey. Hey, I haven't died. Hey, I, ha I have not been sold into um sex trafficking. So, you know, I think that's a bonus, you know, for me. So, um yeah. So that's basically all I have for you guys currently right now. Um, Since I am a full-time YouTuber, um, Crackhead Nation is going to be growing to exponential amounts, so prepare to make more seats at the table for your brethren and your sister kin, or whatever it's called. Um, I'm only a child, so fun fact about me. So thank you guys so much for watching. I loved seeing Super M so much. It was just such an enlightening experience, and it taught me so much about myself and um, also just how beautiful they all are in real life. Like, guys, like, my videos did not do them justice like I mean obviously my my camera was bomb like Samsung sponsored me because I'm literally I did this whole tour with the Galaxy S8 like <laughs> my power I I <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching please like the video if you guys enjoyed it and subscribe for more crackhead k-pop content I'll be seeing you guys in the next video which should be coming out on Friday I come out with videos every Friday so if you guys are interested follow me on Instagram I do a lot of thirsting and k-pop just stupidity over there and just me just doing things like in the day okay I love you guys bye <laughs>